This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there, folks, and welcome to yet another rambling of epic proportions. Well, of of standard proportions, really. (laughs) But you know what I mean. Today, well, you'll notice, firstly, that my surroundings have all changed, so I'm still jiggering around with this microphone here to make sure that I'm at a relative distance as I was in the last videos that I did, and hopefully you can all hear me well enough. If it's a little bit faint, other than normal, I shall tweak for next time. But as you can see, I've tried to. I'm in the same room. I've just moved the microphone over to do... I think what I'll do is I'll move it over here, just so there's some sort of relevant background. (laughs) It isn't much, but, you know, we have the the Stormtrooper glowing head in the background, and my PS4 games are just down here. The the Xbox One games are behind there. And, well, those astute of you may also realise that just under the Stormtrooper's head is the box sets of DVDs for Lord of the Rings with the the two guys with their hands out bookends that I can't remember the name of now. Uh, so it was just to have some sort of relevant background while I was doing gaming or TV type vloggy type things. So hopefully it looks slightly better and I'm slightly more comfortable as it is. Uh, whereas I'll move the mic back to the other location when I'm doing the the talk overs when I'm doing gameplay and such like. So I am once again tucking into my first Friday beer and this week I think if if what's happened is when when I moved from down south back up to Edinburgh I kind of having a bit more space I've kind of got into a lot of telly watching and watching a lot of box sets of things that I hadn't watched and a lot of people already had so I was way way behind so there's a little bit of that in this and I may do a little bit more of that as the channel goes on although I am feeling the tingling to get back into the gaming a bit I but I literally haven't played anything other than I pl- I downloaded and played uh we uh we thingy <laughs> on Xbox <laughs> we happy for you thank you and played a bit of that with my son and it was okay it had a good vibe to it uh, so really annoying survival. It's a survival type game, but it was it was getting really frustrating because like every two minutes it was telling you that your time to eat was running out, and it was like Jesus Christ, how many times does somebody eat in a day? So it was like you've got to eat, you've got to drink water, you've got to collect resources, and that's all fine, but it was all a bit overly heavy. I hope they tweak it. It's not a finished product yet, so I hope they tweak it. But we. Happy Few it definitely has a good vibe. I'm slightly concerned that I I only played a bit of the first area with my son, and to be fair, he played most of the the areas. He did most of the quests, but we both had, we both had a good crack at it. And uh, it, it's we did we set it on non revival initially, and then died not long after, <laughs> which I wouldn't recommend because you have to start all over again with nothing. So just turn that off when you get going and uh, just go for it. There didn't seem to be any trophies and such like either at that point. This was about a week or so ago. So, but it was good fun. And, and if you're into survival type games, then absolutely good vibe in it. I'm not sure how it progresses and how the areas might change as you go on. And I'd need to spend some more time with it. But we literally played it for about three hours that one night. And yeah, it was it was pretty much I think probably what I expected. It's not a triple A title by any stretch of the imagination, but it's good. And that's probably the only thing I've played in the last week. <laughs> so much for the heavy gamer, eh? With a hundred million games behind him and a cupboard full of older ones. But it is literally down to the fact that I have got really heavily into watching TV, and it's one of those things when because I'm on now, I'm what I'm I've signed up to Now TV, so I can pr- I can just go to any box set of shows and just you, you get hooked, especially if they're good, and you're just watching them one after the other. And every time I think, oh, you know what, I'll throw Fallout on, or you know what, I'll do something, and and it just doesn't happen because I'm so hooked on watching what I'm watching. But I will get back to the gaming. I promise you, it's in my blood, so I, I have to get back to it at some point. Deus Ex, as I mentioned in my last vlogs, coming out, and I'm probably going to get that. If not on, on launch day, then I'll certainly get it at the beginning of September, I think. But I am, without any shadow of a doubt, getting the DLC for Destiny because I play that with my good mate Craig and his brother may be getting it as well, who is also my good mate John, and hopefully we will be playing it together. If John doesn't get it, then just me and Craig will be playing it. But we spend quite a lot of time together. It's the only other game, actually, outside of everything else, that I'll always kind of bob back to to play with my buds. 
So if John and Craig are getting that, obviously I'll be getting that and playing that just for the crack of it and, and being with my buddies. Oh, yeah. So well, I've got that coming along in September. Deus Ex I'm excited for, but it's not like I'll die if I don't get it. But I am really excited for that game. I hope it I hope it lives up to my expectation because I really, I really loved uh, hu- Human Revolution. <laughs> I nearly forgot the name of it, the previous one. So they've really, the, I think they've taken all the bits that, that people loved of, the, of that one and enhanced all of that and dumped all the bits that frustrated people, from what I'm reading anyway. But this vlog is not about Deus Ex. So this vlog is about several things I've come across this week. Now, firstly, God, I must have rambled for a good six minutes there about not even what this vlog's about. <laughs> you see, we just see how I can just go off on one, especially when I'm tucking into my first beverage. So firstly, uh, the news that came out in the last few days is that Sony are, well, they have invited people to a press conference called PlayStation Meeting. Very exciting name. (laughs) But it's the first time they've ever done anything like this and everybody is absolutely positive that they're going to announce PlayStation Neo, which is basically PlayStation 4.5 which will be an uber version of the PlayStation 4. And as I've already done a vlog on that, I'm not going to go heavily into it, but this is happening on September the 7th, which is a lot sooner, I think, than other people, well, than most people would have thought and anticipated. I think they're going to try and do this as early as they can and preempt Microsoft doing their uber Xbox One next year, the Scorpio. So that's happening on September 7th. Now, in my mind, if, they're, if they are announcing that console at a specific event on September 7th, I am very strongly believing that they want that console ready for people to buy coming up to the holidays for Christmas. So I'd be very, very, very surprised if we don't get a launch date this year of the Neo, which I'm really surprised with. Because I can't see them calling a press conference to say, way the Neo's coming and it's going to be next year. I mean, why, why would you? I mean, you might as well just wait till another event. So... Pretty exciting stuff, and and I, for one, will invest in that. PlayStation 4 is my primary console, and I will, without any shadow of a doubt, invest in it. I'm actually, I'm in a position at the moment where I've I've got a bit of an issue with the hard drive on the PS4. It it seems to be, without going into massive amount of details, the the, the PlayStation 4s can sometimes tell you they're running out of room far too early when you've got like 100 gig left. And in order to fix it, you need to kind of rebuild it with the pen drive and stuff. But I didn't want to bother with it because I thought, well, when the Neo comes out, I'm going to replace it anyway. So I'll sort all that. So I, I am I'm really excited for the Neo, and I'd love to have the slightly cooler version of the PlayStation 4 without any shadow of a doubt. So very excited if that's coming this year. So that was the first bit of news. So excited about that. And the other two things are movie and TV shows. Now, the Rogue One, Star Wars Rogue One trailer came out today. Now, for those of you who don't know what Rogue One is, you must be mental. (laughs) But Rogue One, Star Wars Rogue One, is set before A New Hope, which was the first Star Wars film we got way back in 77, if I remember rightly. And it is about how they got the plans for the Death Star in order to attack it in A New Hope. And, And somewhere within A New Hope, they mentioned that many people died trying to obtain these plans so that we could attack the Death Star and find out its weaknesses and all that sort of stuff. So it is all about that journey. So it's set before all of the Star Wars films. Well, <laughs> not before the, the the three that no one liked, but set before A New Hope, episode four. Now, I watched the brand new trailer that came out today. Uh, well, I think it was today. I watched it today anyway. And uh, it just gets my blood pumping. I, I love... I mean, it was like that when when the Star Wars The Force Awakens tra- trailer came out, I, 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 I watched the clip for the first time. I swear to God, I was that close to tears. <laughs> It was just so many emotions because it was like that, that kind of took me back to when I first watched Star Wars the music. The vibe was just it just felt like it was the same vibe as those first three that we got. And I didn't get any of that buzz when the other three that, that Lucas did came out. Not that I found them. I've talked about this before, but not that I found them particularly awful. They were nowhere near as good as the others, in my opinion, but not awful. But I didn't get that that buzz and the tingles and the vibe when all that came out. But when I watched The Force Awakens one, I got that. And I kind of got it 
again when I watched the Rogue One trailer. And I think from looking at that trailer, that there has been a bit of a hoo ha because they went off and did a load of reshoots. But that happens with every major film. They 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 film it and they sit the board down and they all watch it and they all decide what they're happy with, what they're not happy with, what could make it stronger, how can we make it better. And for me, that's a brilliant thing. If they're doing reshoots, it means they're pushing for more. They want more. Like and, and with a franchise like Star Wars, you don't want okay, you want awesome. So if they're going off and doing reshoots, that's a good thing in my opinion, not a bad thing. If you if you walk away from filming something and you think it's perfect, then for me, <laughs> you probably could have gone back and done it because they're always under massive time constraints as well. So if they're going back and do back and doing reshoots, I think that's an awesome thing. But you, you watch the clip. I think the casting looks fantastic as well. The uh, the 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 girl that's in it absolutely gorgeous but but not yeah it, she she doesn't come across as, as like you know tarted up and and all that sort of stuff she's a proper like she looks like a proper gritty character that's that's like a kick-ass character and i love seeing characters like on screen i much prefer seeing kick-ass female characters than i do male characters now when i'm watching something and i'll talk about it again when i come to the next part of this vlog but I, I she looks awesome and she 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 looks like she's really nailed the part down you've got several characters that that are in the clip you've got a, a chinese guy who seems to be he talks about the force whether he's actually using it or not we don't know but he's kind of ninja style with this sort of long stick or rod and he's taking down a whole bunch of stormtroopers and then he mentions something about the the force while he's fighting and I do, but I, as I say, you don't you don't actually see whether or not he's got the force. You just see him talking about it. You've got another character, and I'm going to forget his name now. God damn it! <laughs> Black guy that was in loads of things, Last King of Scotland, and all that, wasn't he? I'm forgetting his name. Come on, shout it at me, people! Shout it at me. Anyway, you know you you know who I'm on about. Uh, you see him as a sort of almost sort of what wise character sort of talking to to the girl and then you see her chatting to several different things you see some jokey bits with her and a robot but the there's a the action scenes they start actually playing like a different version of the dun 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 dun, 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 dun. there's a different version of that while it's all you know all the ships are flying around and everything i'm assuming john williams has done the music again hopefully he has but that whole vibe was just awesome. I mean, it just feels really great. And I will put a link on the images that I've been showing while I've been talking to you about the film. So if you click on the image, it will take you to the same trailer that I watched. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. When they mentioned they were going to do in-between films, I wasn't sure. And I'm still not overly sure about the Han Solo ones, to be honest. I mean, Harrison Ford's so iconic in that part. I just don't know how I'm going to feel with someone else playing that part. And I heard today that the casting for Lando Carizian as well. So I just, I find it difficult to, 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 uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it all may change when I see it. Um, it's interesting because when, if you remember way back when they did Indiana Jones 3, the, the one with Sean Connery and all that, Chris, uh, not Crystal Skull, that was the very latest one, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, the the third one, they, they brought uh, River Phoenix in to be the young Han Solo, uh, the young Han Solo, <laughs> the young Indiana Jones, as it were. So, and, and he played it to a T. I mean, I really, really, really felt like I was watching a young Indiana, I nearly did it again, a young Indiana, a young Indy. When I was watching that film, and sadly, of course, he uh, died in a toilet of a drug overdose, which was horrific. But he he nailed it absolutely fantastically. But I don't know if anyone else will be able to do that. And then you've got the problem of whether or not are they going to try and mimic him, or are they going to, to some extent, if you look at the way that 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 Kirk's been redone, you're he kind of, he's kind of gone for kind of going for the same mannerisms, but not trying to mimic at all and it just kind of works you don't feel like you're looking at a you know a younger version of of William Shatner you just feel like you're watching a slightly different version of Kirk but it, all in all it's still the same cocky character so it'll be interesting to see how how they do the Han Solo stuff but as I say 
it won't be till I, well, probably see the first trailer and think, yes, <laughs> nailed it. Or whether I just think, it just doesn't feel right without Harrison Ford. So we'll see. We'll see. If they can find someone that, that, that nailed his mannerisms and such like that River Phoenix did in the indie film, then maybe. But I'm really excited for this film, and I didn't think I would be. They haven't got that problem with Rogue One, because I don't think any characters are being... I don't think any characters are being redone so far as a younger person would have to play someone that was in the older film. But I could be wrong. Someone could could correct me on that. So yes, very excited for Star Wars Rogue One. I hope you enjoyed the visuals there. If you click on them, as I say, you'll get the full clip with all the volume and the sound and everything else. I don't really want to do that on my channel because it'll probably just block it for all sorts of content. But if I keep the sound down and talk over it, I think we're probably okay. So that's something I'll probably do. If I do these, these ones about TV shows or... or films then i'll try and put the, the the visuals up if i can manage to get hold of them now then onward to what's been keeping me away from my playstation 4 over the last two weeks <laughs> it's agents of shield oh my god honestly that i can't believe i i actually watched the first half of agents of shield the first season quite some time ago and then it went off for a mid-season break and i lost complete track of it and I never really got back into it because I wasn't doing much telly watching anyway at that point in time, as I've already discussed, and I was into me gaming again. So I just got back into it and I thought, well, well I risk not watching all of that again and just jump straight into the middle. And that that was fine. I did. I jumped into the middle and, and got on with it and I remembered everything that had gone on. But I absolutely love this show. Now, if you, if you haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you're planning on doing so, I will probably say things that are going to spoil it at this point. So please... Do don't well, don't listen to what I'm about to say. So if you don't want if you don't want to hear any of the spoily bits, then you can you can go off and then look forward to my next vlog. <laughs> but I don't I don't want to hold back too much, so I will be talking a little bit about what's been going on. So I kind of dabble because I, I obviously this is a spin off from the Avengers films, and Shield is an organization that is there to protect people from all the sort of alien type and weird phenomena type things that threaten when the big guns aren't about like Iron Man and Thor and all those sorts of things. And in the film, it's kind of kicked off by Samuel L. Jackson. And he's, he pops, he's, well, he's popped up once in all of the seasons that I've watched because he's obviously about a million dollars an hour. <laughs> so they can't really afford him for the show. That said, the show does look like it spends a lot of money, but they're not going to fork out a million dollars an hour for Shamal O. Jackson, I say, something like that. <laughs> That's not exactly, I don't know his pay scale, but you know. So, but anyway, the, the, you can tell from this show, it, it, not since Buffy have I been this engrossed in a TV show. And not, not really for the fact of what it's about, but more what's in the script. And more about the fact that it's not afraid to get really dark in itself, but at the same time have one-liners and jokes that everybody can relate to because the people who watch this show are people like you and me who play games, watch sci-fi movies, you know, they, they know the stuff that we're going to have seen. And there's references all the way through these shows about, you know, Star Wars and other such stuff. And they're not afraid to go there, you know, and it's just, and they throw them in at the... <laughs> They throw them in at the stupidest of times, at the darkest of times, so it, may, it gives you a belly laugh just when things are like really, really dark and, and the, the backs to the wall and everything. You just get this immediate sort of laugh out loud moment and then you're back to the darkness again. And that's just Whedon all over. He did it all over Buffy. I mean, Buffy was teenagers spitting out things that really only adults of much older experience would have known you know like Beatles references and and you know also well all sorts of stuff but jokes that technically speaking a 16 year old shouldn't have really got <laughs> it's more the, the 40 odd year old bloke like me that would understand it because it was a reference to way back and it's because the people that wrote what they were saying were the same type of people you know the the script writers the people that were writing it was funny to them and this has got exactly the same thing the casting superb. The guy, the 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 main character, who runs the Agents of Shield. He's he's come from the movies as well. He's in them, and there's a whole story about because he dies. He actually dies in the first Avengers film, I think, 
And he, he, Samuel L. Jackson uses that to bring the Avengers back together because they've all kind of had a big tiff. And so when the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. starts, you're like, well, what, how is he here? Because he's supposed to be dead. So there's a whole story in itself that runs in the background of everything else that's going on in the first part as to how the hell he's there because he's supposed to have died. And that story comes to great fruition. And I think there's even it continues through and even into the third one, they're still talking about it i mean he knows at that point what's gone on but they're still talking about how you know the area of how it happened so the the other danger is that with a show like this you can keep characters the same and they but they don't they change these characters continuously they they all become different people as the show goes on because of what's happening around them because of what they've been involved with and the main the main female character really is sky who it isn't actually an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. at all, and she's not been through the S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy and all this sort of stuff, but she she comes into the team because she's a hacker. And they can't... I can't remember, actually, what the... How she... Why they're sort of coming to clash with her, but she they, they find her hacking and doing all sorts of stuff, and she lives off the grid, and she lives in the back of a van and all this sort of stuff. So she kind of comes into the fold as a hacker, but she, through all three seasons, becomes really kick-ass... Because she realizes to live in that environment, you can't. Well, if you're going to be a, a, a mega useful person and it, within that team, you have to be able to do multiple things and have multiple skills. She's w- working side by side with people that could do martial arts and kick ass and do all these sorts of things. See, within the show, you see her, you know, taking on those responsibilities, learning how to fight, learning. And there's there's so much more, and that the, there's. The third series, where we are now, the the, vis- the the things that I'm showing you on screen, that's that's a season two backtrack. So all of that kind of happened in season two. But yeah, she she really becomes uh, really badass in season three because there's more to it in season three. You kind of you don't know who she is, and her journey is. She's called Sky and she has no last name because there's a massive journey behind her as well. She's she's probably the biggest story in it because they they keep hiding things from her because they don't want her to know who her parents were. And when they finally find out who her parents are, they're completely bloody bonkers. And then it leads to this whole evolutionary power thing. And that kind of leads into season three. And so it kind of becomes... Season three is kind of... I haven't finished season three. I'm in the middle of it now. And... It, it, season three has become almost kind of X Meny because they're, they're they're investigating all these people that are suddenly getting powers triggered. Well, the, if you come in contact with this specific thing, it'll either release this genetic upgrade in you or it'll kill you. But you can only be upgraded if you have a specific gene. So that that's kind of where season three's gone. But I won't go too deeply into story. But the the reason I love it is purely down to the same fundamental reasons that I love Buffy. And it was down to the humor, the script writing, the strong backbone of story that they always give it, the underlying stories that they always throw between the main story arc. And the characters, it's, it always comes down to character building when you want a successful TV show. And for me, it, it's priceless in this. And when they lose characters, they're not afraid to to bring in new ones and it's always it's always a weird thing i've been put off shows where they've re- replaced characters before and they've they've done a great job bringing in new characters in season 2 there there was a fair amount brought in in season 2 and there's there's a some being brought in in season 3 as well they're all great they're all really well cast and they all they don't just pitch up and have no purpose they all have a backstory of their own they're not just like, oh, we need someone with powers or we need someone with this or we need someone with that. It's like, you know, they all have some purpose and some backstory that, that keeps you interested and keeps you want to watch. Keeps you want to watching. Keep you want to watch? Keep you want to watching? <laughs> One of them. So, yeah, I've been really impressed. I've absolutely loved it. So, there you are. There is what I've been up to. So far as my TV watching goes, so far as the couple of bits of news that I saw through the week with Rogue One and the PlayStation 4 Neo, let me know what you think about the PlayStation 4 Neo. Are you going to get it? If it comes out this year, are you going to buy it for Christmas? Are you looking forward to it? I'm probably going to save up some pennies and get it for my Christmas. 
and I'll probably save through next year and get the Uber Xbox One as well. So let me know in the comments below uh, what you think. Or you could maybe tell me to sod off because you're a PC gamer. <laughs> and let me know what you think about Rogue One, uh, the new trailer, and or in general. And let me know what you think of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. if you've been watching it. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you again in this vlog. And I shall see you all next time. Take it easy, folks. Bye.